Hello and welcome to our introductory SPM tutorial video. SPM is probably the most popular and most widely used fMRI analysis package out of all the other ones such as FSL, AFNI, anything else that you can think of. It's been around for the longest time I believe. Um, that might be debatable but in any case it has the most users as of this year 2012 and whether or not you use it, it's good to have an acquaintance with it because it's, one, it's so widely used, and also, two, because it requires a very good working knowledge of the MATLAB interface. And for anything, for any type of psychological or scientific research, some acquaintance with MATLAB is a very good thing to have. So we're going to try to kill two birds with one stone here. Now the first thing we're going to talk about is the SPM files themselves and how do you boot up SPM once you have your MATLAB window running. So for now I'll assume that you have already downloaded the SPM files, followed all the instructions, put them into some directory, and set your MATLAB path to look for all those files. Okay. In other words, it doesn't matter what directory you're in, you can type in any SPM command and it will execute. So to show this, we can say type wish spm to see where the spm command is and ideally it should be with all the other spm commands in the spm library so we're going to look within this path right here really quick spm5 and you see these are all the different commands that spm will call upon when you do a very basic or complicated whatever any kind of fMRI analysis so you think, see things like uh, SPM unlink, uh, SPM, SPM, everything, okay? So that's where it all is. And once you have that, and once you have set your path to that directory, so you should have already done this. Um, I'm not going to cover it now, but there's the, the tool in MATLAB to set your path if you need to do that. And once you have that set, you can go ahead and type in SPM to start it. Now, SPM is a suite which can analyze either fMRI data, EEG data, or PET data, if you have that. So, what you can do is you type in SPM, a space, and then the name of your imaging modality. In this case, we're going to be talking about fMRI. So, you type in SPM space then fMRI and you should get something like this. Right? So there are three panes here you should be familiar with. This one in the top left, this contains all the buttons which you'll be using to do and carry out all of your pre-processing and results analyses. So for example you can see that they're bounded to separate them. Here we have spatial pre-processing so that includes stuff like uh, slice timing, realigning your images, normalizing your images, smoothing them, all of that. And then you have specifying your actual model, right? So remember for each individual subject, that's considered a first level analysis. And then at the second level analysis, you, well, what you usually do is you average across the beta weights for individual subjects to create a second level result. And then you can actually look at those results by clicking the result button. Right. The rest of these are mostly utilities, other things you may have downloaded, added to your path. Uh, for example, in this toolbox drop-down menu, we have things like a field mapping correction toolbox and the Mars bar toolbox, which you might use. As well as some other things which we can get into later. Now, if you have, by some mistake, opened up the fMRI version of SPM, you can also change that and go to EEG or PET if you so desire. Alright, so that's how you start up SPM, and I'm going to briefly cover what it looks like when you go into one of these buttons. Just, let's say slice timing for the sake of argument. So within this, in this graphics pane, this opens up all of the nitty gritty options within each of these buttons. And what you'll see is that there's an X in any field that is required to be filled in. So you need to take care of these fields before you can hit the run button or else it's grayed out. So here for this and uh, also another thing I should mention is if you highlight any part of any of these steps you'll get this help window down here 
that will tell you more about the specifics of that tool or the specifics of that step that you're focused on. So for example, I click on one of these steps which has an X in it and you might see something in this pane over here that says, do you want to create a new session or a new branch that you need to take care of? Okay, so if you just click in there once, you'll see something, you'll see another uh, sub-step and it opens up like a tree, everything is tabbed, uh, whatever is subsumed under a higher level step will be tabbed like that. All right. So within this it says, do you want to remove this, do you want to replicate it, or do you want to specify files? All right. I'm going to click specify files to select a couple of things. Now, again, not going to get into details, I've actually selected images that you would never do a slice time correction on. But the point is, I've selected a couple images, uh, now it's happy, it says that yeah, you filled in the, the bare minimum, that step is fine, or at least it will run and do something. You can actually click run after you've filled in all of these other X's. Right. And sometimes you'll see something like specified text, where if you click in this pane, you will then be prompted to enter in some text. Right? And again, usually the help for what you should enter is given down here in this general help box. So for example, enter the number of slices. Let's uh, say it's 50. You can just hit enter and notice again that the X is gone. It says that you have adequately, adequately filled in that field and now you can move on to the next step. All right, and it's like that, so forth and so on. And once you're done, you can hit the run button and you should see some output from that part of the batch. So this is a very, very brief, basic overview of SPM. Again, I'm using SPM 5 on our server, so you might think that this is obsolete. I'm pretty sure that the steps are similar to SPM 8 or whatever the most recent version is. So anyway, we'll cover some more steps and details next time. But for now, if you haven't already, follow the download and installation instructions on the SPM website. Make sure that you're at least somewhat familiar with MATLAB and navigating around, things like that. And then check to make sure that the SPM program actually opens by typing SPM on your command line and hitting return. Okay, so thanks a lot, and I will see you guys next time.